Hey, everyone. Thank you all for coming. So today, we're going to talk about uh, speeding through development through Salesforce Sandbox data set optimization. It took me two days to try to learn this title, and I'm sure I still didn't say it right. <laughs> a bit about myself. My name is Christine Jessen. I'm a pre-sales engineer at Own Backup. I've been with Own Backup for just over a year now, uh, but a little bit more about my background. I actually started out my career as an electrical engineer for Boeing satellites. And then I went on to become a developer and a government consultant, and then ultimately transitioned into the Salesforce ecosystem about five years ago. It's really been a pretty incredible journey, and I've learned a lot about how all the different industries do their development work over time. So I'm really excited to be here to talk to you guys more about how you can improve the efficiencies of your dev cycles. Before we get into sandbox data set optimization, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the challenges that developers, such as yourself, face on a day-to-day -day basis. We all know that there's a lot of development going on out there. Top companies using Salesforce are releasing new features and updates. And in fact, according to the State of Salesforce report, 52% are releasing Salesforce changes monthly or even more frequently than that. So this is definitely keeping Salesforce developers and admins busy. But what's holding them back? So according to a study by Cluster HQ, 43% of app developers, these unhappy little guys in the red, spend between 10 to 25% of their time debugging errors they discovered in production. And that means almost half of the developers out there are wasting a significant amount of time fixing pushed code rather than developing new features. And this is really the sort of work that Salesforce developers and admins are trying to avoid by testing in their sandbox environments first. So what's the fuss about sandboxes? They are a critical part of the Salesforce ecosystem. They're used for a variety of purposes, such as developing, testing, and training. And they really let developers and admins safely build out new features and functionalities without impacting their live production data. But the only problem is getting relevant, fresh test data as often as needed is very difficult and time consuming. So let's quickly run through some of the top challenges of development and testing within sandbox environments. So five challenges with sandbox seeding. One. Uh, the maintaining multiple sa Salesforce sandboxes. The cost of multiple sandboxes can really add up. So if you're using multiple full, full sandboxes, this can get quite expensive. Just one full sandbox can add up to 20 to 30% of the total cost of your production data. Challenge two, testing with your data sets. So this is seeding up your sandboxes, moving relevant size to fit test data. And it's kind of like this, this little picture right over here. It's like using a funnel to filter sand from a dump truck. You end up getting buried in tons of irrelevant data. And testing with this irrelevant data can really allow bugs and errors to slip into your production environment, even if you thought you fully tested out all of your code within your sandboxes. So the reason this is difficult for our many developers and admins to get relevant size to fit test data is that they're testing in smaller environments. So then can, you can only fit a portion of your production data into a small 200 meg developer sandbox. So to seed relevant data into these smaller sandbox environments, you need to be able to filter, refine your test sets, and only be able to pick and choose the test data that you need that's relevant for the code that you're writing. And to also further complicate matters, what if you have confidential data? So providing unauthorized access to personal confidential information can be a huge liability for your company. It can happen easily when you're testing with real data. So really something to consider. Are you currently anonymizing your test data before you send it over to your sandboxes? Because if you're not, it's something that you should be considering. Moving on, development cycles. So development cycles can be slowed and made inefficient by a number of different reasons. One, the slow sandbox refresh. 
having to wait for slow sandbox refreshes can take hours, days, or maybe even more than a week, according to the Salesforce Help Center. And this can really delay your process. Two, manual processes to move data between orgs is really time consuming, especially if you don't have that full sandbox available. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you can manually move data from one environment to another. And then finally, if you have workflows, rules, or triggers, they could accidentally misfire, and that could prevent your data from correctly loading into your sandbox environments, slowing you down, causing you big problems. So when your development cycles are bogged down by these slow and inefficient processes, release deadlines get missed, corners get cut, and it really slows down the overall dev cycle. And lastly, managing your data across orgs. So you have to be able to compare your data and your metadata across orgs. Because what if your schema doesn't match up? What if your sandbox and your production environment have, an, they have mismatching fields? One environment has an extra field. One environment is lacking a field. That's really going to cause problems when you're trying to push data from one environment to another. So without a tool to compare your data and your metadata, the only real way you can uncover the differences between your orgs is to download those files straight from uh, maybe a tool like Weekly Export, compare your data, or if you're trying to get your metadata files, use a force IDE tool to pull down the metadata files and use a diff tool to compare the different schemas. And so, as we all know, this is really a time-consuming extra step that really gets skipped pretty often. So not being able to compare your data and metadata across environments really, um, really can slow you down in your process. And being able to have that correct tool will help prevent things from going wrong after a release. So it's clear that uh, sandbox seeding and testing can certainly be very challenging. So how do you create that perfect test data set in your sandbox environment? You have a couple of options. You can, uh, one, populate your sandbox manually. Two, you can use the uh, sandbox cloning feature within Salesforce. And three, you have the option of looking for an automated sandbox seeding solution, such as own backup. So how do you populate your sandbox manually? Has anyone done this process to put data into a small environment? OK, a number of you guys. For anyone that hasn't, just to kind of walk through the process, first you have to identify the objects that you need. So if you need your accounts, your contacts, your opportunities, you have to identify all of these objects. You have to figure out that hierarchy of the object. And then you have to create a CSV file per object that you want to load. And then in Salesforce, when you upload new records, you actually get back a new Salesforce ID. So you have to find a way to maintain those old IDs and the new IDs so that you can link up those relationships again. And then finally, you have to prepare prep all of these CSV files, get them ready, upload them through a tool like Data Loader, and then you have to also import them in a very specific order. You always have to do the parent first, then you have to get their new IDs, then you do your children, match up the old IDs with the new IDs, import, export, so on and so forth, until you manage to have all of the data in there. And all th other considerations, if you have complex uh, data schemas, if you have polymorphic fields, attachments, they really can complicate the process when you're trying to load this data manually. Then we have the option of uh, sandbox cloning. This is a really great feature that Salesforce provides. Super straightforward. A developer or admin can clone an existing sandbox. And this is really helpful for development, testing, and staging. And you can give every developer their own sandbox so no one is stepping on each other's toes. But there are some considerations to keep in mind when it comes to sandbox cloning. Sandbox cloning can only support sandbox to sandbox which means that you might not be able to see that data from your production environment. And so in other words, your data set may not be fully representative of your current production environment during your test phase. Also, with sandbox seeding, you can't anonymize the data. And as we discussed earlier, this places potentially confidential information in front of third-party developers and consultants. So you want to really 
reduce that liability within your company by being able to anonymize that data set. And finally, you have the option to create your perfect data set through an automated sandbox seeding solution. But there's a better way. So this is what you should be looking for when you're looking at automated sandbox seeding solutions. So an effective sandbox seeding solution will have the capabilities to help you speed up your development, test, and training cycles. It should allow you to easily populate a sandbox data with a perfect test data set quickly and efficiently. And then once again, that sensitive data, you should be able to anonymize that test data before it gets into your sandbox environment. And then a really important aspect, as we're talking about these relationships, with Salesforce being a relational database, you can't afford to lose your relationship between objects. Parent-child relationships, as your master detail, lookup relationships, they're an integral part of your data schema. So your sandbox seeding tool needs to be able to maintain all of that relationship integrity when you're pushing data into your sandbox environment. And then a key step in preparing for a successful data replication is to be able to compare your data and metadata across environments. So your sandbox seeding tool should allow you to be able to automatically uncover those differences between production and sandbox before and after deployments. And then does it scale? So you need to have a sandbox seeding solution that scales to any size organization. You should be able to filter down even the largest sets of data, a couple terabytes of data, to be able to fit that into that really small 200 meg sandbox. And you still need to maintain the integrity of the data while doing so. And finally, being able to manage all of your sandboxes. If you are using those developer sandboxes, you probably have multiple ones of them. You have developer pro sandbox. So really having that one location to manage all of your environments is going to be incredibly handy for you to speed up those dev cycles. And guess what? Sandbox own backup sandbox seeding actually meets all of these requirements. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick to see how own backup can help you with your uh, seeding up your sandboxes. Let me hold over. So this is my uh, own back. One sec. This is my own backup environment. It looks like my Wi-Fi might have momentarily disconnected. So with own backup, what you can see here, this is our own backup platform. We are external to Salesforce, and you're not seeing anything right now. Can you? Uh, it's because I stopped playing a presenter. There we go. Thank you. All right, this is our own backup platform. You can see we are external to Salesforce. So overall, we do a full daily copy of all of your data and your metadata on an automated basis. So one thing to note is you can see here on my one own backup portal, I'm able to manage all of my environments. So I can have my production environment and all of my sandboxes directly managed from here. And the advantage of being external, being able to connect all of your sandboxes, is you're going to be able to push data from one environment to another. So if you needed, let's say I have a new developer sandbox. I needed to get some test data from my production environment. All I have to do select my production instance. And then here, because my production is way bigger than my developer environment, I need to select which objects I need. So I can select a subset of objects. Maybe I need my accounts. Maybe I need my contacts and my opportunities as well. But with own backup, we maintain all of those relationships for you, so we'll automatically identify all of those child objects. You can include exclude attachments if you need them. And now you have the ability to filter down your test data set. So if I have a million account records within my production environment, I only need a subset of them. I can pick a subset directly from here. Or maybe I need a very specific test data set. Maybe I'm testing on a very specific record type. I can put a where clause in here to identify exactly which records I need. 
And then we'll select our snapshot to replicate from, where we want to replicate to, so I can select any of my developer sandboxes. And if you recall earlier, one thing I mentioned is the misfiring of your validation rules, workflows, and triggers. So with own backup, we can automatically disable all of these. After the replication is complete, they'll all get re-enabled. And then once you queue up the preview, it'll go look at your data schema. It'll look, identify all of your records. You'll see here that I'm about to replicate about 10 megs worth of data within my de developer environment. So now I know that this is going to fit no problem. But here I can really see all of those child relationships, all of that hierarchy. I found my accounts object, all of my custom objects that flow right underneath it. And one additional feature, so let's say I do have sensitive information on my contacts. I don't want my uh, data to get replicated on my actual contacts, so I can go ahead and anonymize that test data directly from own backup. And then once I'm all done, I can start this replication into my developer sandbox. So uh, this is the replication tool with own backup. We are downstairs if you guys want to stop by and talk a little bit more about own backup's features and functionalities. But uh, I think with a few more minutes left, four minutes left, just wanted to open it up to see if there's any questions. Yes, so the question is, can you filter the child objects? And you can. So any of these objects, you have the ability to go in and filter them directly from this screen. So you can filter them based off of a query, based off of a CSV file, and then you can filter up to the parents as well. Good question. So the question was, um, when you're anonymizing the data, can you pick and choose which fields to anonymize? So with our tool, uh, you can see it is just a checkbox. So that makes it really easy to anonymize. But we automatically detect the field types. So that's your name, phone number, email addresses, any type of encrypted masked fields. Automatically identify it and then anonymize it. But you do have the option with that CSV file. You could uh, change out anything within that CSV file remove out any ins sensitive information, and then upload that as well. I'm sorry. Is a question, do you want to rerun the job after you've pushed the data set? Yeah, yeah. So you have the option of uh, being able to duplicate one of these jobs and be able to rerun this job as needed, filter it down, save the jobs that you've already filtered down with your queries. Yes, you can. So our tool supports production to sandbox, sandbox to sandbox, and sandbox to production. So the only other one I didn't name there is production to production. And that's because you really need to make sure that all of that schema is the same, but you could go that direction, sandbox to production. Mm -hmm. Yes, the question was, does the metadata backup backup all of your profiles and permission sets? And the answer is yes, we do backup all of them. OK. There's nothing else. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>